In an age of drug-resistant bacteria, the race is on to find new medicines for the 21st century. In the newly opened Heinz Wolf building at London's Brunel University, a dedicated team led by Professor Ian Sutherland began work on a revolutionary biological extraction system. The system became known as countercurrent chromatography. Countercurrent chromatography is, is a platform technology and it's very useful in the case of drug discovery mm. and development in, in isolating molecules from nature, from mm. natural products, from plants, from soil, uh, from organisms, if you like. Could countercurrent chromatography open the door for the discovery and cure of some of today's most challenging diseases? Countercurrent chromatography, great idea because uh, it enables you to separate out com complex pharmaceutical mixtures or indeed uh, uh, con stuff that's contained in plant juices and plant extracts. Fantastic technology. So Ian, countercurrent chromatography is used to separate and extract components from a mixture. Would that be correct? That's right. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how the process physically works in the lab. The best way for me to demonstrate that is to use one of our models. Yeah, excellent. It, it comes about because this technology uses two liquids mm -hmm. that do not mix. And here you see two liquids in a tube, one dyed orange and one dyed yellow. Now if I were to tilt this tube, you see that the orange is moving up and the yellow has moved down. Yeah. So they move countercurrent to one another and you notice that there's a lovely sort of mixing between the two, like mm. waves in the sea. Right, okay. And what we try to do is to flow one liquid as a mobile liquid yeah. against the other one being a stationary one. The trick is, in the mobile one, you put in your mixture mm -hmm. that you want to separate mm -hmm. and that dissolves into the, the mobile liquid phase and then we pass this uh, mobile phase through this long piece of tubing mm. and on the way it meets a lots of mixing and settling stages right. where it gets extracted successively into one phase or the other. Okay. Now if it's got compounds in it that like the stationary phase, they go through very slowly. Yeah. Whereas if it likes the mobile phase more than the stationary phase, let's say it likes it like that yellow dye very much indeed, mm. it'll go straight through. So that's how you separate the compounds in the liquids. Now, right. So this is um, a coil planet centrifuge. It has a sun gear here and a planetary gear here. I've put a green spot on the planetary gear so you can follow its motion, which is a cardioid. It goes from the outside here, it goes to the inside and to the outside again. Note that the leads do not twist, but the, the green dot is going at a low G there and a very high G there. And by G, I mean number of gravitational fields. So this unit operates around about 200 to 1,000 g, 1,000 times the Earth's gravitational field. The tubing comes through the center of the Sun axis, round through 180 degrees to the planetary axis, and then comes through to the drum, and it is wound around the drum. There's only one loop on this, but normally we wind around many, many times, and it forms a helix. Mm. Limited, the spin out company yeah. to make these instruments for us. Okay. So, what has that meant for the development of the technology? Once that technology was developed, the idea was then how do we exploit and use such a, an idea in a, commercial, in a commercial environment? Dynamic extractions, therefore, was a, a way of expressing the knowledge, the skill the ideas, the technology and the science that came out of Brunel University. So the first step is demonstrating that you've got some sort of um, application and use for it. 
and then talking to the potential end users and saying, what do we need to be able to do with this in order to be able to give you something which has got value to you and then we can modernise and upgrade this technology in order to suit those end user applications. So what we have today is a technology that is very reliable, that will allow you to do all the basic stuff, but then quickly you can scale it up, you can produce the material in quantity to go into the clinical trials to do the studies that you want to do. So if you're identifying something from a plant, for example, yeah. that could be a potential therapeutic, uh, it could take years before you can actually start to identify the molecule and make enough of that molecule to do some testing. Mm. Today, because the technology is so advanced, you can, you can compress that time scale quite dramatically. Well, what we're doing here is uh, separating compounds from uh, a plant extract called mm -hmm. stevia, which you might have seen in various soft drinks. Mm -hmm. um, not only a sweetener is contained in this plant, there are other high value chemicals. And using this, which is really modern technology, we can extract these high value chemicals and um, separate them and get them to market, hopefully. In other ways, they'd be in a waste stream and thrown away. This is a prep scale machine, so we can put in large quantities of compound and get out large quantities of the compounds that we're looking for. But also, um, a lot of the technology, HPLC with solid columns, actual you know, steel columns with solid material in, is quite old technology. I was working with it back in the early 1980s, whereas this is very 21st century cutting edge technology. Um, there's a lot less wastage, you can reuse the solvents and it's a lot more tunable so uh, it's, it's a much better process for doing what we want to do. You are going into sea urchins or whatever, you know, plants, you're extracting tiny amounts of stuff mm. and you're using this counter liquid countercurrent chromatography to identify those molecules. You're talking about molecules. If you were to use, or that, which, which is what happens, the technology in a development laboratory at a very small scale and the targets that you produce as a consequence of using it are used in clinical supply then they can form the, then the basis of the drug development and clinical program. The big advantage here is that because of the direct linear scalability we can now move that process which is already developed into a commercial environment without the need for doing a lot of technical transfer and revalidation work. You see, when a new uh, big company, big pharma company develops a new molecule, they're so anxious to get that into clinical studies. It could well take them 10 years. Uh, the patent life is eroded by the development time. So they want to get into the patients as fast as they possibly can before probably they have absolutely um, uh, optimized the synthetic process. So the, the result is that there's a lot of active, can be a lot of active, in the waste streams uh, from the synthesis of the new drug. Something like CCC can go in and just pull the active out of it and clean up the, clean up the waste stream. It's a, it's a most important technology. If countercurrent chromatography offers a fully scalable solution for the extraction of active ingredients, then what impact could the technology have on natural product research? It's our latest collaboration with Chishuang University in Chengdu in China and we are helping them to prepare application for Chinese FDA for production of a new anti-cancer um, drug uh, from um, uh, Honicule, uh, um, purified from the um, magnolia bark extract. Particularly for antibiotics, most antibiotics come from natural products. Right. Yes? Yeah. Why? Because they compete in their environment for a space. Mm. So organisms produce antibodies to keep other organisms away. Yeah, so it's a natural process. Yeah, so it's a natural process evolved over millions and millions and millions of years. So if you want new antibiotics, mm. you, in my opinion, you've got to go back to nature. Right. And you've got to start doing natural product screening. Right. So uh, antibiotic resistance is fine, you can talk about it all your life, but that ain't going to help. You need new antibiotics. Right, and uh, you think that, that this new technology is... Well, is it would help, help in, that. In, in doing natural product research in that area. Okay. So if you and I set out tomorrow, mm. 
with a big grant to do natural product research for new antibiotics, we will buy counter-current chromatography equipment and stick it in here. Nature is a far, far better chemist than any synthetic chemist that I ever met. You know, the, the molecules which are in nature, uh, we probably simply do not know how they get there, why they're there, but they are there and there's some potentially important drugs there. And the way to get at these drugs is by CCC.